Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a horror film called 616 Wilford Lane. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 2005, it was proven that 666 is not really the number of the beast after a missing piece of the Papyrus 115 was discovered. As it turns out, 616 is a sign of the beast. At 616 Wilford Lane, Auburn, California, a family is peacefully sleeping one night when the cupboards in the kitchen suddenly open. Then, the older kid in the first bedroom gets up and goes downstairs to take a shotgun, which he uses to kill his parents. As if that isn't enough, he also shoots his sister hiding in the walk-in closet before blowing his head off. Six months later, Jim kneels beside his wife and cries, realizing they don't have much time left. So, his wife asks him to be strong, and Jim tells her he'll never love anybody the way he's loved her. Then, Jim brings their daughters, Randy and Stacy, inside the room to say goodbye to their mother, and it isn't long before the poor woman dies. After the funeral, Jim decides to move to a new place, much to Stacy's dismay. Stacy thinks her father is being selfish, but Jim points out they're all grieving. He also mentions how it broke him to just sit back and watch as his wife succumbed to illness, but unfortunately, there was nothing he could do about it. Jim wants Stacy to accept that things will never be okay, upsetting his daughter and causing her to walk away. Then, once Stacy is gone, Jim starts drinking. Later on, Jim meets a beautiful realtor, Austin, who shows him the house at 616 Wilford Lane. Jim is reluctant since the place is too expensive, but Austin tells him to consider it an investment and adds he can now buy his wife's dream house. Jim then reveals to Austin that his wife passed away, so the realtor quickly apologizes. Luckily, Jim doesn't mind, and the two continue the house tour. Jim can't deny how amazing the place is, but he gets worried when he realizes Austin is gone. Then, Austin suddenly shows up, saying she left her purse upstairs, and Jim eventually decides to buy the house. Once they move in, Stacy makes it clear she's not happy with her father's decision to live in a luxurious house. However, Jim tries to ignore her and just proceeds to unpack. He is then startled by a bird that suddenly crashes into the window, and seconds later, he greets his neighbors, David and Joan Gleason. After that, Jim introduces Randy and Stacy to the Gleasons. David then says it's great seeing that house filled with a family again, but when Joan looks for Jim's wife, Jim replies it's just him and the girls. Sensing the awkwardness, David asks Jim to hang out with them sometime, and before they go, the Gleasons tell the newcomer where they live. Later that day, Randy asks Stacy to go easy on their father. Stacy feels like she would be better off on her own, but Randy can't imagine her not being around. Then, their conversation ends when Randy teases Stacy and gets her wet, and when Jim sees his daughters playing in the pool, he can't help but feel happy. That evening, a sleeping Stacy gets up and stands by the door, doing absolutely nothing. At the same time, Jim is busy watching TV and doesn't notice that the cupboard has just opened. Then, the bottle of wine on the counter slowly moves, and in a room, Randy screams when she sees a shadow by the window. The bottle eventually falls and breaks as Jim rushes upstairs to see if Randy is okay, but the girl is distraught and says somebody's outside. Worried, Jim immediately goes out to see if there's an intruder, while Stacy finally goes back to bed. Moments later, Jim calls Sheriff James, who remembers going to that house to investigate the brutal killings of the people who used to live there. Deputy Boyle is also with him, but when Jim invites them inside, the sheriff refuses and simply asks to speak with Randy. The girl says she saw a shadow peeping in on her, and Jim adds he chased after the person. However, Jim lost the intruder, but he thinks the guy ran over to David and Joan's yard. Sheriff James is surprised that Jim met the mayor and his wife, and Jim can't believe it either. The sheriff then plans to talk to David and Joan and says maybe what Randy saw was just a coyote, but he still makes sure to remind Jim to get a rifle. So Jim says he already has one, and seconds later, Stacy gives Sheriff James a flash drive containing all of their security camera footage. Unfortunately, the officers do not even bother going over to the Gleasons and Sheriff James tells Jim it's not a good idea for him to wake the mayor up in the middle of the night. The next day, Jim gives his daughters money for coffee while he walks around the town. He doesn't expect to see David there, and the mayor asks about the intrusion. 
Jim says although everything is fine, Randy was a little shaken up. David then assures him that their town is safe, adding that Randy probably just saw a critter looking for scraps. Also, he tells Jim he doesn't have to call the sheriff and upset the neighbors. Realizing David is right, Jim says he's sure Randy was overreacting a bit. David then invites Jim to join him, Joan, and some of their friends at the ale house that evening, but Jim is a little hesitant. However, the mayor won't take no for an answer, so Jim eventually accepts his invitation. Meanwhile, Randy and Stacy meet Matt and Miles in the coffee shop. The guys just sit at Randy and Stacy's table and introduce themselves, welcoming them to Auburn. Then, they quickly leave as soon as Matt gets Randy's social media ID. That night, Jim hides his rifle in a cabinet and informs his daughters he's having drinks with David, his wife, and some of their friends. He also tells a stubborn Randy to put on a coat before reminding Stacy to call him if they need anything. Moments later, Jim arrives at the alehouse and realizes Austin is also there. At home, Stacy has no idea that the chandelier is moving, but she gets distracted when she hears a door suddenly closing. So she goes upstairs to investigate, but Jim and Randy are both not home. Then, Stacy rushes downstairs after witnessing her bedroom door shut, only to be scared when she sees Randy with Matt. Frightened, Stacy tells Randy there's someone inside her room, so Matt takes a baseball bat in his car before going upstairs. However, Matt doesn't find anyone there, leaving Stacy in disbelief. Stacy then checks the security footage and shows it to Randy and Matt, but the two think it's just the wind. Concurrently, Jim checks his phone and realizes his daughters need him after sleeping with Austin. Randy shows her father the security footage once he gets home, but Jim says it's probably just a draft. Then, Jim goes upstairs to check on Stacy, and he is startled to find her standing in the hallway. The girl looks like she's in a trance, but she suddenly breaks down when Jim touches her. In the morning, Stacy watches the footage of her crying and says she doesn't remember it. Jim thinks Stacy was sleepwalking and tells her he already saw the other footage of the door closing, but he believes it's only a draft. He also points out it's a little far-fetched to say the house is haunted, thinking Stacy is just having a hard time adjusting, especially after her mother death. Still, Stacy disagrees with Jim, and she can't help but feel like her father and sister are teaming up on her. Randy then clarifies that they're not, while Jim says they all just handle grief differently. Pissed, Stacy decides to go with Randy to Matt's place, leaving Jim exasperated. At Matt's house, Randy says she thinks her father is sleeping with someone. Stacy feels uncomfortable discussing that, so she just talks to Miles about their house. However, Matt stops Miles when he mentions someone named Cody, and even though he doesn't get the chance to say what exactly happened, he makes it clear the guy did something terrible. When they return home, Stacy tries asking Jim if he's seeing someone, but eventually decides against it. Meanwhile, Randy doesn't notice the shadow in the bathroom while taking a shower. Then, later that night, the cupboards start opening and closing again as Stacy leaves her room and stands in front of the cabinet where Jim's rifle is. At the same time, Randy's door opens, and an unseen force slowly pulls her blanket. She then screams when her door slams, alerting her father and causing him to rush to her room. They immediately look for Stacy after that, and when Randy finds her, the girl breaks down again. The next day, Jim shows Sheriff James the footage of the previous night's events, and while the sheriff admits it's odd, he isn't sure what to do. So Jim tells Sheriff James that strange things are happening in his house, also asking if he knows a kid named Cody. Jim says he learned about Cody from his daughter and wants to know what he did, but the sheriff doesn't answer his question and only changes the subject. Concurrently, Stacy tries to find anything about hauntings in Auburn online, only to be disappointed. Then, Stacy asks Matt about Cody and learns that the kid shot his parents and younger sister before turning the gun on himself. Stacy and Randy also can't believe it happened in their house, but Matt says it doesn't matter anymore. Afterward, Randy makes out with Matt in the bedroom while Stacy plays pool with Miles. It isn't long before Stacy and Miles are kissing too, and they fail to see the shadow walking down the hallway. However, Miles gets distracted when he sees a cue ball moving, but he decides to ignore it. Upstairs, Matt and Randy remain oblivious to the door slowly opening. Then, Randy's dresser suddenly moves, and when the door slams, Matt gets pissed and thinks Miles is playing a prank on them. So he rushes downstairs to confront Miles, but his friend has no idea what he's talking about. When Jim gets home, the distraught teens immediately tell him what happened. The boys then eventually leave, and Stacy says they already know about Cody and what happened in their house. Unfortunately, Jim doesn't believe them and says he's sure the incident didn't happen in their home. 
To prove that, he shows the girls the paperwork from the sale and states it wasn't disclosed in the document that people died there. Still, the girls can't help but feel scared, wondering what's happening around them. That night, Jim witnesses the cupboard open, so he closes it and turns around to go back to his seat, but he finds a scary-looking Stacy blocking his way. Then, Jim suddenly wakes up and looks around, realizing he just had a nightmare. Later on, Jim is about to leave the house when David approaches him. Frustrated, Jim asks the mayor about Cody, but David says he doesn't know who that is. He also bribes Jim by saying he'll unwind his loan just so he'd stop bugging and worrying everyone, making Jim believe they're all hiding something. Afterward, Jim visits Austin and asks her about Cody and his home. Of course, Austin says Cody and his family didn't die in Jim's house, but Jim doesn't believe her and says strange things are happening in that place. He also mentions his daughters are having a hard time, and even though he says he got everything on security surveillance, Austin wonders if there's a chance the girls are just faking it. Naturally, Jim sides with his daughters and tells Austin that's something they'll never do. Once again, Jim asks Austin if Cody and his family died in his house, but the woman says no and just asks him to leave. She then slaps Jim twice when he moves closer to her, only to kiss him in the end. Later that evening, Matt and Miles take Stacy and Randy home. However, when the girls realize their father isn't around, they decide to sleep in the living room. They don't notice the plate floating in the kitchen, but it isn't long before Stacy starts sleepwalking again. When Randy wakes up, she quickly looks for Stacy upon realizing she's gone. At the same time, Jim tells Austin he needs to go home because his daughters have already called twice. Then, Randy finds Stacy in the office, but she doesn't expect her sister to shoot at her. Randy runs away as Stacy tries to shoot her, and the falling plates and utensils in the kitchen scare her even more. Struggling to find a place to hide, Randy locks herself in her bedroom and sits in the corner. Then, she shouts from the window and tries to warn her father, who's unaware that Stacy is waiting for him with a gun. However, Jim doesn't hear Randy, so she just tackles Stacy to the ground. Unfortunately, Jim still gets knocked down, leaving Randy with no choice but to go outside and call for help. Meanwhile, Stacy walks backward as she goes upstairs. She returns to a room and breaks down, and while thrashing around, her drawer moves and blocks the door. Wasting no time, Jim rushes upstairs and forces his way into Stacy's bedroom, where he doesn't see the shadow on the wall. Jim only wants to get Stacy out of there, but when he lays her on the floor to open the door for Randy, the girl suddenly gets dragged away. Despite being scared, Jim follows Stacy and carries her outside, and shortly after that, they inform Sheriff James about what happened. Six months later, Jim sues Austin for failing to disclose that Cody and his family died in his home. Jim's lawyer also plays the footage showing Cody killing his family in Jim's house, proving that Austin is aware of it. Then, once they reach a pay settlement, Austin apologizes to Jim for lying and says she really cares about him. Sadly, Jim doesn't believe her and just leaves. Later on, it is revealed that Jim and the girls are con artists and not even blood related. They just staged everything to get a million dollars, and Jim only slept with Austin to get a copy of the footage showing Cody killing his family. Randy wonders why Austin would keep it, so Jim says she probably kept it for leverage against the mayor and the bank. Jim and Randy then celebrate their success by making love, and it isn't long before Stacy arrives and joins them. In a flashback, it is shown that Jim learned about the house by following Austin and listening to her conversation with her colleague. Jim also praises the girls for staging the haunting, and they drink to his fake wife, Robin, who was a part of their scheme too. After that, Stacy finally leaves, but she makes sure to poison Jim and Randy first to honor the promise she made to Robin before she died. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.